I had a video pop up under my recommended feed by Yana Benu. Uh, didn't know she had her own channel, so of course I listened to it. And they were talking about several things, one of which were the Chinese and Russian soldiers that are going to be taking over everything. And um, I know it's really hard to know who to believe and what to believe because deception is the name of this end time game and in fact it's the word used to describe most more often than any other word in the Bible to describe the end times but I just wanted to reach out and let you know that my brother has a store in Sevierville Tennessee I won't say what kind of store because I don't want to uh, have people be able to figure out who he is but there my mother was visiting him as well at his store and indeed there were Russian and Chinese soldier military men in his store buying things and my mother who is very incredibly childlike and naive even kind of asked them oh you know what are you doing here and they said they were doing exercises up in the clinch mountains so in case anybody tells you that that's a lie that is not true because this was mm, two years ago. Absolutely, positively, they were there doing training exercises. So I just wanted to let you know that. And then as far as the rest of the message, um, it's going to be really for everybody. And I've made some notes because I want to be sure that I didn't um, forget anything. Because, uh, you know, I know a lot of people are making their decisions and trying to figure out what we're supposed to do. So just a couple of important things to do re irregardless. Be sure to make copies of all your records and your driver's licenses, your credit cards. Um, make copies of everything and put them in a Ziploc bag so that you have an extra copy. Also be sure that you have recent photos of all your family members and keep those in the same bag. Um, there are not uh, maps sold really hardly any places anymore because everybody has GPS and other navigation systems. So even at the big box stores, they're not really sold. But if you go to truck stops, make sure that you get a really detailed state map of where you're at, a hard copy, good old-fashioned map that shows all the little side roads, back roads, because you may need to use them and not be on main roads that have cameras and, and things like that. So be sure to get a couple maps of the state that you live in. And if you think you might have to go to another state, get all the state maps that are real detailed on the way. Um, I also want to apologize a little bit for the last video I made. I know it was pretty, um, yeah, I was feeling pretty helpless, hopeless. But you kind of don't know the whole story. You know, on my, you know, my Mandela community, they kind of know where I'm coming from, what I've been through. But it has really, really, really been a difficult uh, last five years. And things are not uh, getting more normalized from that, but they're continuing to increase. Now, I know you're probably going to hear a lot of people tell you, oh, yeah, Mandela effect, that's just a bunch of bunk. You know, or people are going to tell you, well, that's just, you know, Satan's grand delusion. You're going to hear a lot of things, but I'm just here to tell you it is very, very real, and it's not what unaffected people think it is at all. Um, so pretty much when I made the, the last video I did, I, I couldn't come out and tell everyone uh, because I knew a lot of people that w were not from my Mandela Effect channel were, were going to be listening to that video. But that video kind of came on the frustrated heels of having something really, really big in, you know, the Mandela shift world happen. And that was kind of the last straw and I couldn't take any more and I did the video. Now, what was that? Well, you're probably not going to believe it. Just like, you know, my family didn't, my closest friends didn't, uh, nobody does. But those of us around the world that this is happened and is happening to continues to happen or we are the ones that can see it or whatever but i had just had an incident because there there are a few big the big big things you know everybody has their biggest mandelas you know one of the biggest ones is that we're missing a continent here um it, there was the Arctic, Antarctic, North America, South America, Africa, Eurasia, and Australia. Those were the seven continents, and we don't have a continent here, and there's not even a landmass at the North Pole. 
So uh, just saying, I'm not saying that's not how it was for you in your history. I'm just saying, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. Please don't tell me I'm wrong because I know what I know. So that was a big one. The other biggest one was uh, the fact that we're not predominantly in uh, oxygen-based environment here. You know, we were 86.2% oxygen where I was, and this is an almost 80%, uh, almost 70 or almost 80% nitrogen here. I, I don't even know how that's possible. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. You know, and then there's other things, you know, other elements being on the table of uh, periodic elements like krypton. Uh, krypton and kryptonite were in comic books where I came from. So, yeah, it's been a rough time. And then, uh, you know, the last thing that happened that was just kind of set me off, you know, amidst everything that's going on with the pandemic and everything was had a, I had a man who came in to the pharmacy um, about an hour before close, visibly distraught. His wife had unexpectedly died. She was fairly young, uh, completely unexpected. He walked in in the morning and found her dead, and he was, you know, distraught and trying to figure out what happened, and maybe, you know, somebody slipped some drugs into her medication vial. And I knew him. It's not like I didn't know him. I, I knew them both. I knew them both well. So, and then he, he was there for a half hour um, talking about, you know, how badly his boss treated him because he needed time off and all this other stuff. And I printed out, you know, her medication records because the coroner wouldn't release them to him because I told him, well, you know, you're not going to want to hear this, but usually the spouse is someone they're going to, you know, suspect if it's not a expected death. So then I did what I normally do for every family member who comes in, letting me know that their loved one has passed away. I have to go into the record and there's a field where I have to, in the deceased field, put a date, the date that we first learned that a patient is uh, deceased, which locks out the record, closes it out, nothing can be done with it. So that's what I did. And um, lo and behold, about four days later, I get a call at the pharmacy from some woman wanting to know if she's got any uh, antihypertensive medication refill still left in her profile, and it was the woman who was dead. Um, yeah, so that, that was really, really difficult to deal with. I didn't even know how to respond. You know, I just kept kind of saying, well, I'm, I'm kind of confused, kind of confused, and I'm fumbling to go back to the screen to try to remove the date out of the deceased field to see if I can even reactivate it. I've never had to do that, so I don't even know if I can. Um, in the meantime, you know, I'm asking her, well, you know, have you just been in the hospital recently? Um, and, you know, no. Why would you ask that? Well, your husband, um, well, no, I just, I, I'm just really confused. Anyway, so I'm waiting for him to come back in so I can see what he looks like. I know what it's going to be, but anyway, so that was a tough day. And then a couple other, like, major shifty things happened within that same couple of days. And then I just, I'm just so tired of all the lies regarding what's coming. And it's coming faster than people realize. And it's going to be so much worse than people realize. So I pretty much had one of those days where I hit a breaking point and I did that video. So if I looked desperate, it's because I definitely am. But anyway, so um, anyway, you know, you, you might not be aware, but there are several of us who've actually been watching Steven and his videos uh, for, I don't know, two or three, maybe a little bit longer years now. And we've even watched Steve stumble when he's getting ready to read verses that he already knows by heart. And he's getting ready to read something where it looks like somebody has copied and pasted something for him to make his slides. And there will be new Mandela insertions in there that he's not expecting. And he'll have to stop. And he's seriously stumbling because he knows how it's supposed to read, too. Uh, but then has just had to kind of work around it. And we all kind of laugh because we know what's going on and, you know, waiting to see how long it takes different people to get it. Um, so people better believe that we are out of the age of the church out of the age of grace and in tribulation and uh, people are going to see very crazy things and to save anyone hopefully um, 
a steep learning curve because there, there were not people that were seeing this in whatever group or wave that I came here or woke up or whatever this is. Um, so people that are just kind of coming here or to this now really are pretty lucky because they have some other people to guide them. But, you know, judge no one, judge no situation, judge nothing you see. Definitely leave that to God. Uh, because it's going to be very, very difficult not to judge things that you're seeing with your own eyes, but that aren't, you'll, you'll know what I mean when the time comes. Um, and I could kind of tell, you know, the little bit of newer desperation in Stephen's voice regarding, you know, all this information that's coming. And as you said yourself, you know, you're not sure, you know, it's almost better not to know. And a lot of us uh, felt that for a long time, but you won't eventually. As bad as the things are going to be, you will really give thanks so hard for just being awake um, because it really is going to be the thing that's going to help navigate you through everything that's coming. Um, as far as listening to people, some of the sources you know, like Mike around the world, Mike from around the world and that. Um, again, I can't really say 100%. I can only go by, you know, a lot of us have been watching him for four or five years now. And a lot of the major things that he said back then didn't come to fruition. And again, that could just be, you know, maybe a fluke. That doesn't necessarily mean the other things that he's talking about won't come. I don't know. However, um, if he knows so much, as he clearly, you know, talks about, well, then why can't he know anything about, you know, hard dates or, 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 or things? I, I don't know. That just kind of doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, another thing uh, that people really should be doing to get ready is to be sure that you get uh, like a stockpile or some, some medicines together. Now, yeah, I know they take prescriptions, and obviously if you don't have certain conditions, they're not going to give you prescriptions, but there's ways around that because everybody should have um, some staple things for their family members, you know, different classes of antibiotics, uh, simple, you know, older generic ones for some gram-positive microbes, for gram-negative microbes, um, for, you know, some mixed microbes, things like that. It's kind of too late to go to those international online pharmacies to try to order things because they're really months and months backed up now with people trying to order things without a prescription. And I'm not referring to any controlled medications, so let's get that straight right now. No controlled medications I'm talking about. I'm talking about antibiotics, antifungals, anti-helminthics, um, anti-nausea medications, uh, different topical um, preparations, a lot of different things, but I'm not talking about controls. So if you can't get them um, online, kind of not the most reputable, but there, there are some, but they're pretty backed up and you're not going to get it there. So most doctors who are, of course, in the system, in the matrix, um, they're not going to prescribe you things without a documented thing that they can make a ICD-10 code for and a diagnosis code because, you know, doctors are not autonomous. Medicine and pharmacy is nothing what people think it is at all. Doctors cannot just do whatever they want. They have managed care and other agencies and organizations that are over them and they're being watched and, you know, different physicians get flagged as being outliers if they, you know, do too much of this or do that or don't do this or that. So when they're telling you, you know, especially in the pain med field where things are really changing and they say they really can't and their hands are tied, they're honestly not lying to you. They are not able to do what they want by themselves at all. So, um... What you need to do is go to your pharmacy and ask your pharmacist, you know, just kind of nonchalantly, hey, who, who do you guys consider as the most 
you know, quack doctor that we have in our town. You know, everybody's got one. You know, these are the, the outliers that seem to write a lot of prescriptions for patients with a lot of refills on them that really medications that shouldn't have refills, you know, like Keflex even. You know, antibiotics don't generally have, sometimes they'll have one, but they don't generally have refills for a reason. So, you know, some of these outlier doctors that all the pharmacists consider as quack, not good doctors, well, these are the few doctors who know what, you know, managed care is, and they know what things are being done, and they're really kind of bucking the system, and they're trying to do things uh, really more for the people, even though eventually the people themselves, because of the opinions of the pharmacists and other doctors and people in the community, all recognize them as a quack doctor. Well, they're really not a quack doctor. So if you can find um, a doctor like that and go in, just let them know, you know, honestly, you're trying to put together a kit, you know, for your family, you know, you think things are going to go to a head and, you know, you're not being irresponsible, you're not asking for any controls. And most of the time, these doctors will slowly, um, you know, because they still have to assign, oh, well, if you had a lot of you know, they'll say you had a sinus infection, you know, gave you an antibiotic with three refills, you know, that way you've got some for family members. So these doctors will often do that. You just have to find them. So that's all, that's all I want to say about on that. All right. And then back to the Mandela craziness in relation to determining where to move. If you are in Florida or a neighboring on a neighboring state coastline. Um, now, again, you can take what I'm going to say with a grain of salt but I have truly been through some supernaturally, supernatural impossibilities since 2015, 2016. And in fact, it started a little bit earlier than that with uh, the Blood Moon Tetrad, which I think was 2014, 2015. Um, but I just didn't really start to see things or link things or believe things until, you know, 2015, especially 2016, say starting 2016. And man, did I see some things in 2016. Um, Jacob Slatter, um, for those of you who know what that means, yeah, I saw that. I did see that for a very long time, probably for a good eight months. And it was really, really crazy. Um, as a matter of fact, I've, I've got my own theory, but I'm going to hold because that's going to sound even crazier. But I believe that to be true on how we're kind of shifting on um, like uh, timelines and things. And it is of God, but that's going to sound too crazy until you're ready. So I'm not even going to go there. Anyway, um, so now having said that, one of the things that I've kind of had to look at when trying to figure out where to go, I, I see things, and other people, not just me, you know, like the land mass changes and things like that, and there's an awful lot of new land, you know, appearing, appearing that wasn't there, or the land masses that were there are bigger, or they're closer. Like, when I first moved to Florida on my original timeline or whatever, Cuba was an island smaller than Key West and lined up directly under Key West, you know, 110 miles or 90 miles south of Key West. And now Cuba is longer than the entire state of Florida. The Bahamas, you couldn't see those when they did a digital weather map and, you know, they're showing stuff. You couldn't see the Bahamas. They were too small and they were, you know, way off the coast. Now when they're doing a weather you know, there's these huge island masses that were not there, and they're getting bigger, um, and things are shifting. You know, I, I lived in St. Thomas for a while. You know, nothing is where it was, and things are shifting. So the only thing that I've kind of thought about that in the back of my mind is that maybe, um, you know, I'm seeing those things for a reason because maybe eventually, you know, there's going to be new landmass. You know, maybe like, you know, when Atlantis left and went down, maybe that's going to come back up. I don't know. But there's new land around Florida. And when I look at Google Maps and things, you know, th there's more coastline with the light blue that 
is getting ready to turn into sand and look like land. And I know you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, but I'm just saying. So that's the only thing that I keep thinking about um, when I think about staying in Florida, leaving Florida, because no, you know, intuitively it does not seem safe at all here, especially if you've listened to the people that I know from hearing you that you've listened to as well. You've heard the same things we've heard about, you know, the pole shifts, about just everything, about everything. Um, you know, but then I think, you know, if I go to Tennessee, you know, there's all those troops out there, you know, practicing in the Clinch Mountains and getting ready to do whatever. And remember, the mountains are supposed to come low and, you know, the low is supposed to be exalted high. So I don't know. I, I really have ambiguous feelings about what to do, uh, whether to stay in Florida or whether to go to Tennessee. So I just wanted to say that. Um, you also mentioned in just your last video that I saw yesterday about you know, the Jews being called back to the land and all these planes that we're going to be picking up, you know, all these elite pastors and things and other people and flying them back to Israel for safety. Don't even worry about that at all. I can tell you right now, Israel is going to be wiped. I mean, wiped from the face of the earth and all the people that are there, except for the ones that are going to be coming out on a supernatural highway, the highway that's talked about in the Bible, and that's how those real Jews, the ones who uh, follow the law and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, the real Jews, that's how they're going to be escaping. And it will not be a big, scary ordeal for them. And the other people, yeah, they're, they're not going to make it. There is no safety there for those people. I'm just here to tell you, there is no safety anywhere there for those people. Only the people that God is going to draw out supernaturally, and they're going to get to their place of safety, much like how many of us came here and got called out of our land to come try to talk to people, and people don't want to listen to us. Yeah, this is like, um, I'll tell you what this is like, and, and I'm not a person, I know you don't know my background, but I'll tell you, I was not one my entire life, my entire life, and I'm pretty old. Not once did the word God, Jesus, religion, church ever come out of my mouth to anyone, anyone, my entire life. Why? Um, not because I was an atheist per se, because during my youth I was in church, but because I, like many people, you know, once you're in this world for so long, you know, and there's all these religions and all these people, and, you know, a lot of these people seem good, you get to where you start thinking, well, who am I to say what religion is right and what God is real and whatever? You know, everybody's got their story. So, you know, I, I'm nobody to say, so I, I can't say nothing. Well, let me tell you what. When you get called out, everything that's in the Bible that says how it works and how it's going to happen and you're going to be given the Holy Spirit who's going to lead you into all truth, which is Jesus Christ, and things are going to be brought into remembrance for you, that is exactly what happens. And Jesus Christ absolutely is the only Son of God who died, crucified for our sins, rose three days later. That is the truth. And um, I know a lot of people are not going to believe that because... Until this happens to you, I don't think you can believe. I don't think until, unless or until a person gets called and goes through that process of, you know, uh, sanctification, justification, glorification, you know, were, am, and will be. Um, that's why there's no one saved, always saved either. Anyway. Anyway, until somebody goes through that for themselves, they're, they're not going to know the truth. You can't know the truth. It is impossible to know the truth until you're given the truth. So, yeah, don't, don't worry about those people over there and thinking, you know, God's going to, you know, deject the true believers here. And I'm, I'm not saying, yeah, I, okay. Yeah, don't worry about them. Anyway, um, he will bring... 
He will bring the true believers there to safety. I promise you. Anyway, I'm glad you put a list out and glad you told people not to provide their names to other people right away. I think that is really going to help a lot of people or it's a good venue to help a lot of people. Time is very, very short, uh, but God will supernaturally provide people the time to do what they need to do to get where God wants them to be. Now, this doesn't mean everyone but for those who have full, unwavering faith in Jesus Christ to deliver them. I don't mean full faith for half the time. I mean rock solid, non-lukewarm, never turning your face from Jesus for one moment kind of faith. Uh, for these people, God will deliver. And you can use the Old Testament, uh, the stories that physically happened in the Old Testament that played out, to know what's happening spiritually right now, because that is exactly, exactly what's happening. Every physical story or thing that played out in the Old Testament is exactly what is happening spiritually in the New Testament. It is crazy. I want to point something out to people you wouldn't think needs to be pointed out, um, but it really does, and it, um, then some people really, really get it. When God said, come out of her, my people, he wasn't talking to Muslims, Buddhists, and atheists. He was talking to you. If you call yourself a Christian, um, too many people are worshiping a denomination of a church or a particular uh, Bible version like the KGV. And these people are the ones he's talking to. Uh, they are into religion, but are not into God as he truly is. And he keeps warning people, um, you need to come out of religion. It's not about religion. It's about God, Jesus, and the entire redemption plan. It has nothing to do with religion. If you are a Christian who is exceptionally learned in scriptures, be very careful because there will be a huge replay of what happened to the Pharisees. These men were the absolute best, top people when it came to knowing scripture. They knew it better than anybody. And look what happened to them. I'm here to tell you that the exact same is going to happen to many Christians. So don't be divisive with other brethren over scriptural interpretation because it's meaningless and a waste of precious time. You know, unless one is... Uh, one of the sealed 144,000. Um, they are all singing the same song that no one can learn but them, remember? Because they've already been redeemed from the earth. Those people are here, but not here. They have been given some extraordinary gifts. I've talked to many people. Um, some prophecy, some gematria, some discernment. And when people, you know, these worldly leaders are out there saying so many things, you know, like something as simple as, you know, that, you know, the Jews are going to be called back and, you know, everybody is going to do, you know, a physical exodus to Petra or Basra. That's not what it's going to be about. I'll tell you with full authority that it's not a fully physical journey as you might think. In fact, many people are here now and see themselves as kind of being here in this mystery Babylon and Egypt, but also somehow being here, being in mystery Basra spoken about in the book of Micah and some other books. 
Mystery Basra is a crazy place, and we are waiting for the head at the sheepfold um, to break loose, and that's when we're all going to be able to leave here, if you wanted that answer as to when. So I'm telling you, do not fear if you truly love Jesus Christ um, and recognize him as the only Son of God, which was crucified for our sins, rose three days later. You are going to experience amazingly supernatural things. Prepare for this. Prepare for this. Pray unceasingly for God to give you eyes and the strength and courage to do what you will need to do. Do not get confused by the people who are going to tell you that the supernatural, uh, all the supernatural wonders and miracles that you're, that you're seeing uh, are all from Satan and that you must reject all of it. That is a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie from the mouths of people who haven't read the Bible with a heart for God to be shown the truth in the scriptures about what is to come. Don't forget that throughout biblical history, during those times when the greatest uh, miraculous wonders and power of authority were being displayed, it was God and Satan both who were showing them at the same time. Moses and the staff and the Pharaoh throwing it down, both trying to you know, turn it into a snake, both doing this, the other one does that. And what happens in the end? Who wins? Yeah, it's not just Satan doing this thing, these things. So uh, don't let people mislead you because they will be a stumbling block to you. You're going to have to prepare yourself. God is supernatural, and it's going to be a supernatural journey for you. God keeps saying he doesn't change. Well, it's the way it was then, and it is the same way now. And also, don't believe if you are experiencing a lot of great difficulties and someone else isn't, that you must be damned or something. Um don't forget that God always judges his own home first so that lest no other nations, you know, think God is unjust. So if, if you have lost everything or went from the top of your game to the bottom of the game, um, simply know what this is and what time it is. Keep a heart of praise because this place here is not your best life. The best life is the one to come, and you know this. Any comments on the rapture? I'm really going to hold off on making any commentary on that for now because really it would take too long, and I know I'm already going long, but just know for now that we are no longer in the age of the church, no longer in the age of grace. Uh, the majority of people who are expecting not to have to deal with what is coming. Um, they are wrong. And the only reason I'm even saying this much on the subject is to tell those people, when you find yourself aware that we are in tribulation, I don't want you to think that you have been either, one, dejected by God, or worse yet, two, uh, that this whole Jesus thing and the whole story was just a big fat lie because you're still here going through tribulation. That will be the number one lie the enemy will be telling everybody over and over and over. So don't be deceived, uh, because that could be the lie which causes you to lose your faith and your salvation. All right, so I know I've gone way over everything that I wanted to say. 
Um, and I'm going to try to stop. <laughs> but just pray often as, as often as you can remember to. Don't be divisive with other true believers. Uh, and know it's not being divisive to wield the sword of God, which is Bible scripture, to get through to people whose fruit bears them out as not being fellow true believers. Simple as that. You know, so despite all these one-liners like, well, everyone has their own opinion, or let's just agree to disagree, or any of the other notorious New Age, you know, comebacks, God doesn't change. Just as he has done before, people are going to see for themselves that their opinion means nothing compared to God's. Uh, that they're disagreeing is only going to bring wrath down on their own head. Um, the parallel story that I that most comes to mind is the story of when the Philistines uh, took the Jews, took took the Ark, took the Ark of the Covenant from the Israelites. Um, the Philistines captured the Ark of God and took it to Ashdod into Dagon's temple. Dagon is their god, and they sat the ark beside Dagon. In the morning, the people went in, and they saw the statue of Dagon face down on the floor. Um, so they picked it up, put, picked up the statue, put it back on the shelf. Next morning, they went in again, and again was lying face down on the floor with its head and its hands broken off, and it was just a body laying on the threshold over there. And to this day, this is why neither the priests of Dagon or anyone who enters Dagon's temple in Ashdod steps on the threshold. They step over it. This is the reason why. It's pretty funny. Um, so anyway, God brought down devastation and affliction on the people of Ashdod for doing what they did. Then once the people realized the connection and what was happening... Uh, they said, uh, we got to get rid of this ark because the God of Israel has his hand on us and our God, Dagon. So they called the uh, rulers of the Philistines for advice, and they said, well, send it over to Gath. But then the hand of God was over on the people of Gath, and he threw that place into a huge panic and afflicted young and old alike, until they finally sent the ark over to Ekron. And when those people saw the ark coming, they were screaming, Oh, you've sent the ark here to kill us and our people. They knew. They knew. These were not Jews. They didn't believe in God, but they knew what this was and what was going to happen. So they called the rulers of the Philistines again, who said, Yeah, send the ark back to its own place, or it will kill us and our people. So you see, eventually, people are going to understand who God is. It's just going to be a matter of how much defiance, rebellion, and death is going to have to happen uh, before they get it. And remember, I said, God always judges his own house first. Judgment on God's people comes first, and then devastation comes to all the other nations who wanted nothing to do with God and didn't heed his word. Abraham, you know, he lied. He went into the country and lied about Sarah being his sister, did all these things. Well, yeah, he got punished, boy, did, you know, God put the thoughts, you know, heart-wrenching, you know, this guy is, you know, laying next to my wife. He's, you know, kissing my, you know, my wife, thinking she's my sister. He was just, you know, in excruciating emotional pain. So he was punished, but Guess what happened to the people? Yeah, they got punished and they ended up giving all their stuff to uh, Abraham and his people and they full up took all the bounty and left. So, yeah, uh, Moses, you know, he even killed a man. What a, you know, what a crime is that? Well, who was destroyed? It was the people of Egypt. So, yeah, you know, his own people will get judged first, but then, wow, is great wrath going to come on the people and the nations. All right, so seriously, I'm done. I, I love you all. May God give us strength and compassion and, and guide our steps. Um, take care, and I hope I'll be able to talk to you all again soon. Bye.